Welcome back to part two of the law of cosines. And in this particular part, we're going to talk about finding the area of a triangle, uh, specifically an oblique triangle. I know you can do um, a right triangle, um, and you can do a triangle if you know the height. You can do one half the base times the height. But we're going to look at some different formulas where one of them, you're able to get the area of the triangle if you have two sides of the triangle and the included angle. And for that particular formula, what you need to do is you're still going to take one half, just like you normally did with the other formula, the one that you know, um, but you're going to take one half of the two sides and then the included angle of A. So if you take one half of two sides, then the sine would be of that third side that you don't have, but it would be that angle. So you just need to memorize the process here and that particular formula. Also, it's in good to note that this is two sides and their included angle and then you're taking the sine of the angle for the area. Do you remember when we did part one of this lesson, I'll flip back here, we did two sides squared minus two times the same product of the cosine of the angle when they were included, if we had the included angle. So it's, it's a similar formula, but not quite exactly the same, obviously. Um, the other formula you'll need to know is what we refer to as Heron's formula. And that formula, you, all you need is three sides of any triangle, and then you can use this formula. The magic number you need to figure out first is a value we refer to as S, that Heron claimed as S, and that is one half of the sum of the sides. And you would think maybe he's taking the average, you add those up and divide by three. But remember, this is the area of a triangle, so we always use one half. So you first have to calculate this S value, then you use that value, take the square root of that value and the product of that same value minus side A times the side times minus B and that same side subtract side C the product of all those numbers, and then you take the square root of that, and that gives you the area of that triangle. It's kind of nice to just be able to have the sides of the triangle, and then you can still calculate the area. Now, we're going to do a couple examples for this. First one is if you are given an angle of A that's 25 degrees, you're given side B of 20 yards and C of 25 yards. So let's try to get a visual of this. If I have, uh, let's see, so I've got this side's a little longer, this side's even longer. So if I make that, if I make this 25 and this 20, then that makes 25. If this is 25, that makes this angle C. If this is 20, that makes this angle B, and this must be angle A, which is 25 degrees. So I have two sides and an included angle. So I'm going to use this formula. So the formula tells me that I'm going to take one half of my two sides my 20 and my 25, and then I'm going to take the sine of that included angle, which is 25. You get that product, and you have 105.7, and no naked numbers, right? I'm dealing with yards here, so I have square yards. You may have a region in the garden, you may have you know, some dimension, some triangle where you have two of the sides and you know that angle and now you can figure out the area. Let's do another example. 
Let's say you have a triangle where you are given the three sides, 24 centimeters, 53 centimeters, and 39 centimeters, and you want to find the area. Don't necessarily need a visual, but we'll, we'll do one here. Let's see. Um, I'll just keep going up. That kind of looks like a right angle, but didn't mean for it to be. All right, 53. See, this would be the next one. 39. 24. Okay, and I want to know the different, I want to know the area within there. So the first thing to do is I need to find the value S. So S equals one half the sum of the sides. So I've got 24 plus 53 plus 39 and that gives me 58. Again, you need to practice this. This is just addition. This isn't hard, but still try this. Work through this. Make sure you get the same values. Now, Heron's formula up here tells me that now I'm going to take the square root of this product. In the product, I have the difference between this number s and each of the sides. So I recommend writing this out just so that you don't miss anything. Square root of 58 times 58 minus 24, 58 minus 53, and 58 minus 39. Now this is a product, right? So it doesn't matter the order in which you do the, the subtraction of these different terms. You just need to make sure that you have the product of each of the four terms. Multiply all that out, you get the square root of 1, 8, 7, 340. And don't forget to take the square root. That's where some people do make their final mistake. They forget to do that final square root. Not done. No naked numbers. Let's see, what do I have up here? I have centimeters. This is area, so it's going to be centimeters squared. So the, the calculations themselves are not hard, um, but you do need to memorize the formulas and how to get the area of a triangle. And so now you're, again, you're just adding to your tool belt. You have more ways to calculate the area. All right, I will see you in class, and then we will do this lesson on the law of cosines. Thank you.